Welcome to Wake Up TV. I'm Eric Curry. We have several topics for you today. The number one priority for the Wake County Board of Commissioners for 2013 is to work with the Wake County School Board to develop and pass a bond referendum. And with us to talk about those meetings is the chairman of the Wake County Board of Commissioners, Mr. Joe Bryan, and the chairman of the Wake County School Board, Keith Sutton. Thank you both for being here. Thank you, Eric. Uh, let's start uh, first by talking about how important it is for the board's uh, to work together. And I think it's very important for the community to see uh, the uh, school board and the Wake County Commissioners again in partnership making sure that we have this important infrastructure in place for all the growth that we continue to have in, in Wake County with 25,000 or 30,000 people a year coming to Wake County and a lot of them have children and so so we need to, to build some more schools and to, to maintain our schools. And okay, Keith, the same question. I think, you know, the, the voters of Wake County elect us, elect both boards to, to do a job and that's to do the business of Wake County, to be good stewards of our resources and our facilities and, and, uh, and, and to be businesslike and professional in, in uh, our execution of that. And so it's important for us to work together to send a message to the community that we are working together, that we think education is important, we think maintaining our facilities and maintaining growth is important. During these joint meetings, that's exactly what has, has occurred, and there's been uh, a, a lot of discussion back and forth, but in the end, it has ultimately enhanced the relationships between both boards. How important have these meetings been? Well, there's a lot of information that's included in this bond and this bond package and, and what both boards do. Uh, so just looking at the growth, again, we're, we're growing by about 3,200 uh, new students uh, each year. Uh, in this package, there are about 16 new schools being built, 11 elementary schools, about three middle schools, two high schools. And so just trying to figure out, again, what those needs are, as Chairman Brown said, uh, you know, we projected uh, uh, a lot bigger package. We had to whittle that down uh, to what we felt like was, was doable and was reasonable, uh, what we could accomplish in three years, how we would go about doing that where those schools would be located, what needs to go in those buildings, what other kinds of needs beyond just the building of new schools but renovating uh, existing campuses, adding other infrastructure needs such as security cameras, technology, computers, um, those capital needs that, that aren't part of uh, the annual operating budget that we put together. So for the two boards to get together and hash all of that information, all that detail out, uh, takes a lot of work, took several meetings, and it's a long-term plan, even though this is, you know, covers the next three years. We know uh, all the way out to about the next eight to ten years where that growth will continue to occur uh, and where those schools need to, need to be built. I would add that uh, it was a unanimous vote on both boards. So, again, this is not a, uh, a Republican, Democrat, unaffiliated issue. This is an issue of making sure that we're providing uh, the needed capacity and the maintenance of our assets that we have for, for the citizens of Wake County. And both boards coming together and, and recognizing that and now we're moving forward to the public with uh, the anticipation and expectations that, that they will see that need to, to make this investment in, in our schools and our children. And Mr. Bryan, obviously with everything that's needed in the schools, it's the county commissioners that uh, have to look at the checkbook to see uh, what is viable. And, and obviously the, the debt capacity is something that you and your colleagues look at very closely. You know, three to five years, we're expecting over 20,000 new students uh, in our system. You, you, you just have to be prepared for that. Uh, you're, you're right, Eric, in terms of the, the county is responsible for, for building schools. That's, that's a direct responsibility that the, the county and our citizens of Wake County you know, need to, to make that investment in our schools. Uh, fortunately, over the years, due, particularly due to our professional managers like David Cook, uh, Wake County has been one of a handful of counties to carry a AAA rating by Standard Poor's, Moody's, and Fitch. Well, that's a handful of counties out of 3,069 counties. And, uh, and part of your 53.4 cents in your millage rate per uh, 100 is, uh, uh, is 15 and a half cent is set aside for, for debt service. Um, so we want to be, again, as mentioned earlier, good stewards, uh, do as much as possible. It's a great partnership. We're going to work hard. 
Okay, well, to meet that projected student growth and to maintain quality learning environments, the boards decided that a $939.9 million building program was needed. When we come back, we'll talk more about the building program and the bond referendum. The future is in your hands. It is a choice to follow or lead. Wake Tech Community College. I am awake. For those aware of the possibilities. I am awake. Eager to take the next step. I am awake. And awaken their potential. Wake Tech. Are you ready? Are you awake? Wake Tech. Lead the way. The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. Thanks for joining us again. Wake County voters are being asked to consider a bond order by voting in the Tuesday, October 8th, 2013 election. Again, I'm joined by Chairman Joe Bryan with the Wake County Board of Commissioners and Chairman Keith Sutton from the Wake County Board of Education. Thank you, gentlemen, for staying with us. Uh, before the break, we were talking about growth and the bond proposal that provides a lot for the schools. Chairman Sutton, can you tell us a little bit about the projects that would be completed if the bond is approved? Um, well, again, I've talked about, you know, the, the number of new schools, the, the, along with the 16 brand new schools that will be built. Uh, we've got those six major renovations, uh, major equipment and uh, uh, maintenance uh, done, uh, purchasing of uh, furniture uh, and, and other technology features, uh, computers, things of that nature. Uh, they're all part of it. Uh, purchasing of land, uh, we, we do uh, some real estate purchases as well. Uh, so we have to acquire land. Many of those sites we've already acquired. So it, it's a number of uh, a number of things that, that will go into it if it's, if it's approved. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Bryan, one thing that, that uh, the Wake County citizens can always count on is that the commissioners uh, will come in every year and education, education, education continues to be a priority whether it's the Wake County Public School System, Wake Technical Community College System, and the libraries, a synergy there. Uh, how important are these projects to the county commissioners? Well, I mean, you're right in terms, Erica, that it may be about education. Oftentimes it varies at the, at the top. Obviously, recently it's been about creating jobs mm -hmm. and making sure that we're there. We've worked on uh, building human capital through our human services, mental health has been you know a major initiative for a number of years, and uh, so there's there's obviously public safety's you know clearly right. with the sheriff and with our EMS and and our fire departments, there, there's a lot of priorities that that are out there, and to kind of speak specifically about uh, some of the financing involved, this will be a, a total investment of 939.9 .9 million dollars. $810 million will uh, need to be financed. The, the rest will be paid for in cash. We'll use general obligation bonds backed by the full faith and credit of the county with, with the taxpayers and the citizens voting for the bond. Uh, it's similar to us paying for our homes. You pay, kind of pay for it over time. And we'll, as we talked earlier, looking for low interest rates. And we will be, we're going to be transparent about this and that there's like 4.86 cents uh, property tax uh, increase on a home uh, for the capital and another 0.67, so approximately five and a half cent uh, tax increase that, uh, that the citizens would see once, once the, they vote for this bond. Average home, $263,000. That means uh, that people will be paying approximately $145 a year uh, in additional investment in, in our community. We're being upfront about that, not only for the capital side, but the operating side of uh, this is what we're asking uh, the, the cost of making this investment will be. Now, the, the bonds will be paid back over a series of years. 
but they will also support the public school system for several years. Sometimes this is considered a cycle. Can you explain how the, does this bond cycle work? We've grown by an average of 3,200 students over the last few years. Uh, that was a slower pace to the five to 6,000 students that we were growing when the economy was, was humming along. Uh, so even in a slower recession, uh, we've still in, continued to increase our capacity uh, as a school system and as a county is seeing that same growth uh, and, and growth in this tax base you know, as well. So again, looking at uh, where those schools needed to be built, um, this bond helps us to keep pace with that growth. We would have loved to have gotten a little bit ahead of that, uh, in front of some of that growth, but again, we felt like uh, what we could reasonably accomplish in this time uh, was sufficient enough to, to, to help us keep pace with that growth. So as we're looking at the construction, renovation of, uh, construction of new schools, renovation of, of uh, older facilities, because the public too expects us to maintain uh, the current facilities that, uh, that, that we have. I think we've jointly been able to maintain uh, a, a reasonable tax rate, even though again, most of us obviously don't like to pay, have to pay more taxes, but this will, to make this investment, we'll need to pay a little bit more in taxes. We, we have these bond issues every few years, the last time being in 2006, and we're, uh, we'll be looking at it again. I mean, as long as we keep growing, uh, I can tell you the 3,068 other counties in America would love to be dealing with, with these types of issues of having growth and, and new items as far as quality of life, whether it's our open space, our libraries, the, the response time on public safety, and we need to periodically have these bonds and ask the public are they willing to, to make this, this investment? Chairman Joe Bryan with the Wake County Board of Commissioners and Chairman Keith Sutton with the Wake County Board of Education, thank you both for being here to talk about this partnership between the two boards. And uh, we'll just have to wait and see how it all shakes out. Thanks, Thanks again. Thank, thank you, Eric, for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Residents can find more information about the Wake County Public School System by visiting the school's website and more information about the bonds and financing is available by visiting wakegov.com slash bonds. Early voting starts Thursday, September 19th, and Election Day is Tuesday, October 8th. When we return, we'll look back on new codes that were implemented to protect consumers who frequent eating establishments. Hey, I'm Anderson Cooper. As a parent, you want to make sure that your child knows how to deal with bullying when they see it happening. And chances are they want to help, but they don't really know how. Well, teach them that the best thing to do is calmly walk away, find a teacher or other adult, and speak up. And do your part. Be that adult they can talk to and trust will listen. Join me to help stop bullying. Go to stopbullying.gov to find out more. spend eight minutes decorating their little brother. Brushing for two minutes now can save your child from severe tooth pain later. Two minutes, twice a day. They have the time. On September 1st of last year, the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services made changes to the food code that establishments must adhere to. The code is to safeguard public health and to provide consumers with food that is safe. Joining us to discuss the new guidelines is Environmental Health Supervisor Francis Breedlove. Thank you so much for being here, Francis. Can you first share with the public a little bit about what your staff does as, as it relates to food inspections in this county? Well, our main goal is to protect the public health by reducing or eliminating risk factors that contribute to foodborne illness. We do this by making unannounced inspections of our food and lodging facilities. Francis, Wake County it covers a large area. How many uh, restaurants, establishments does your staff uh, inspect on a yearly basis? We're responsible for almost 4,300 facilities that uh, operate in Wake County. We inspect restaurants, of course, which are the most that we have. 
We have food stands, which are be basically restaurants without seats. We inspect meat markets and grocery stores, school cafeterias, uh, school buildings themselves, hospitals, nursing homes, daycares, push carts, mobile food units, these mobile units that you see that are real popular uh, right now. We do hotels, summer camps, just a lot of different type of facilities. And each one has different, different rate, rules and regulations that apply. And obviously when folks walk into any establishment and they see that uh, rating on the wall, uh, really there's a lot that goes behind uh, that establishment getting uh, that score. You have to do a lot in order to uh, make sure that they uh, are within the state guidelines, correct? We uh, review food sources, uh, all food handling practices, good personal hygiene, cleaning and sanitizing of equipment and utensils, general cleanliness and repair of the facility itself, pest control and solid waste disposal. Points are assigned to the violations and deductions are taken depending on the severity and the reoccurring nature of the violation. A score is a uh, result and it is posted to the public. Now, can you tell me, uh, share with us a little of the changes that were made uh, a year ago and, and, and why were the changes made and, and has it affected the way in which you and your staff uh, go out to inspect some of these food establishments? Well, some of the changes were fairly, fairly major. Uh, some of the critical violations, risk factors were not addressed by the previous code, so we feel better about, about the new code in that regard. Um, there is required to be a certified food protection manager, someone who's passed a certified test and demonstrated knowledge uh, on duty at all times that the facility is operating, so that's a major change. A facility must have an employee health policy in which this addresses employee health and employees not coming to work when they're sick and being able to transfer bacteria and viruses to, to customers. There is now no bare hand contact of ready to eat foods. So things that are already cooked, ready to eat, will not receive any more heat treatment to kill bacteria, uh, cannot be touched with your bare hands. You can wear gloves or you can use utensils, but that eliminates the transfer of bacteria and viruses from someone's hands. Consumer advisory is required to be posted to the public if they serve raw or undercooked food. This was not in place before, so people that wanted rare burgers were not really allowed to have that in North Carolina before the, the new code. But now, if a facility posts the information to the public, they can read that and determine for themselves if they want to eat a rare or a raw or undercooked product. There now is required to be date marking on, on food products that are prepared um, or any type of potentially hazardous food that's kept in the facility for 24 hours or more. And what that means is that food is not left around for long periods of time where bacteria can grow and, and produce illness. Coal hold has dropped from 45 degrees Fahrenheit to 41 degrees Fahrenheit. This helps control the growth of listeria bacteria in a product that we know still grows in cold temperatures, but it will not grow as much at 41 and 45. So this is kind of a, a, a mini recap of some of the major changes that occurred uh, with, the, with the new food code. And do you think these changes have benefited the public? Well, we feel like that the facilities will be serving safer food if they follow these new guidelines. And of course, that will be a bene benefit to, to everyone who eats there as far as the reduction of any type of foodborne illness. How can prospective uh, business owners as well as current business owners find information about the guidelines or anything related to your office? There are two main ways that they can uh, look up the information on our website and it's at wakegov.com slash food. We have information for buying, building, and remodeling a restaurant. There's links to the, to the rules and regulations for all the different type of facilities that they might be interested in uh, opening and uh, there's contact information about who handles that particular uh, area of, of the county. And then the other, other main way is they can contact our office. And the main number is 919-856-7400. And they will be directed to the person that handles that particular territory of the county. And any citizen can also go online to do their own research about a particular restaurant that they would like to visit or have visited in the past. 
That's correct. On the, at that same website, wakegov.com slash food, there's information about all the inspection scores for the facilities that we inspect, be it restaurants or daycares or whatever. And they can see the score, they can see the date, they can see the comments that the inspector actually made for that particular inspection. Great. Well, great information, Francis. Thank you so much for being here. You're welcome. Thank you. When we return, we'll introduce you to the county's program integrity office and how they're saving taxpayer dollars. NFC, AFC, offensive linemen, defensive tackles, quarterbacks, and cornerbacks are all living united to ensure the academic success of millions of kids in our communities all the way to graduation day. But that won't happen without you. So take the pledge at unitedway.org. Make a difference in the life of a child. Suit up like your favorite NFL players and become a volunteer reader, tutor, or mentor with United Way. Know what? What? Since I got adopted, I've learned a lot about these humans. Uh, I know. I mean, check out these two. It's Flirt City over here. Yeah, I noticed that. It looks like my human is definitely into your human. Oh, look! I think she's getting his number. Nice! Your human's got some sweet moves. Takes after his dog. <laughs> oh, look, they're doing that thing where they put their arms around each other. She kicked up a leg! It's like in the movies! That's awesome. Looks like we're gonna be hanging out a little bit more. Every year, thousands of Wake County residents walk through the doors of the Wake County Human Services Building in need of assistance, whether it's to obtain food and nutrition assistance or to subsidize their child care needs. County staff work tirelessly to help provide those services. To ensure that the services are dispensed and used accurately, staff with the county's Program Integrity Office often investigate possible cases of fraud by some recipients. With us to talk about the program integrity is the supervisor, Marquette Hester. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. First, can you tell us a little bit about what program integrity is? Our goal is to ensure that families receive the uh, correct amount of benefits that they are eligible to receive. Uh, what we do is we investigate those individuals um, that we receive referrals from. There are a number of areas that your staff uh, would investigate uh, along with food and nutrition. What are some of those areas? Uh, again, food nutrition services. We have Medicaid, all the Medicaid programs, which include Medicaid for pregnant women, infant and children, adult special assistance, child care, the energy program. Um, we recently have started doing housing investigations with Wake County as well. Now, there are intentional and unintentional cases of fraud. Well, with the intentional, we have the clients um, that may come in and apply for assistance. Let's take, for example, food nutrition services. They come in to do an application. At that application, they're employed, but on the application, they may state that they are not employed and there's no income in the household. Um, so intentional, willing, deceitful, um, the intent is there to commit a fraud, to receive benefits that they are not eligible for. Um, we would have to go and make sure that we review our records, um, that we check our, our verification systems to see if the client was actually receiving um, income at that particular time that they applied for services. And so that's when we look at there's an intentional program violation. What are some of those cases that then are unintentional? Can you give me an example? unintentional, um, they may not have reported their income timely to their case manager. And so the benefits were issued based on the fact that we did not address that issue timely. Um, there's also agency error that would not be a client um, error, but because of their government funding, the client would be responsible for paying back that overpayment. Now, how are you first notified of possible fraud um, from some of the recipients? We have um, clients or citizens that call in. Um, they call our number. We receive referrals from the DSS agency case managers. Uh, we also receive referrals from the state and federal agencies. Just a number of 
of referrals that we can receive. Now, a lot of the cases, I guess, that your office handles uh, can be resolved within your office, but I guess many uh, of the cases can also move on to the court system? Yes. Um, once we do our investigation of records, we will have always given an opportunity for clients to come in to discuss the case. At that time, the information that we have, they may have something different to offset that to justify what may have occurred. Um, and so at that time, that's when we will again take into consideration what information or evidence that the client has to offset whatever we, we come up with um, to say that maybe absent parent was in the home when they weren't, they actually left the home and they have verification of that. Um, we also, um, if we see that it is valid, um, it's clear and concise, we do refer cases to the uh, AD office and so we staff with them um, and cases are uh, prosecuted through the court system. Now Marquette, are there some cost savings to being able to successfully uh, catch uh, fraudulent users of the system? Yes, um, we have a front-end detection which we have a cost savings of 1.2 million for front-end detections and as well as ongoing when we have our investigation that again as I mentioned prior um, client may um, absent parent moves in the home um, and so we stop benefits at that time. We have a cost savings there of $946,000. We are, Wake County is the top collecting county for Medicaid um, in the state of North Carolina. So if folks have more information uh, about program integrity or to uh, discuss their particular uh, case file with someone in your office, uh, how can they contact you? Okay. We are located in the Waverly Atkins office building at 337 South Salisbury Street. Our direct contact number is 919-857-9211. Also, um, program integrity does not do uh, retail investigator fraud. So for USDA, I have a contact number for that as well. That's 1-800-424-9121. For Medicaid um, provider fraud, they have also a number, which is 1-800-662-7030. Or you can contact our state number um, with the state of North Carolina. That's 919-527-6300. Well, thank you, Marquette, for, for being here and to share with us uh, important information about uh, your office. Okay, thank you for having me. Keep up with the latest Wake County news by visiting our new website. That's wakegov.com slash news, or you can stop by our Facebook or Twitter accounts. That's all for our show today. Thanks for watching.